Hello Lobos and Canvas learners. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Canvas's Seed Grader to grade submitted assignments turned in by your students. So I am currently in my testing course. I do want to back out though and show you the overall global or dashboard view, uh, just so you can see how this looks. So over here, as a teacher and as a student, you have a to-do list. As a student, it's going to show that an announcement, it might show the due date. As a teacher, it's going to show the number of submissions that you have. So that's what this number indicates. So there have been six submissions turned in for this particular assignment. And then I can see all of my assignments if I have this many. So that is all of the submitted assignments for all of the courses in which I am an instructor. I'm gonna go back into my class now, my testing class. And that's going to show me just the ones that I have to grade for this particular class. So you can see that I have one online assignment and one Google Cloud assignment to grade. All right, so I can click just directly on that item on the to-do list, and I could do that from here, or I could have done it out from my dashboard. So if you ever just open up Canvas and you want to start grading, you just need to find the one you want right here, click it, and it'll open it up directly in SpeedGrader for you. All right, so in this case, the submission was, they had an option to do a text box submission, which is what this student chose. Let me move my little, I don't know if it will let me, um, but it says, here's my summary. So I'm gonna read their summary. I'm choosing pay-per-view. I'm gonna put their grade in. You can see that it's late. This was due, I'm gonna say maybe on the 26th but the submission window was still open, so the student was still able to submit, but I do have an indicator that it was submitted late. So I'm gonna say that this, that paragraph is worth um, 75. And then I'm gonna leave the, some feedback for the student right here. I can either type my feedback, or I can actually record feedback. So I have options here with the media player. I'm actually covering up a video right now, um, but I could come here and turn it off and just say no video, and that's actually going to let me just do an audio recording. Hello, test student. I really like how you started off your summary, but then you spent a little too much time on the beginning of the book and you didn't quite make it up through chapter 12. So you may wanna you know, consider when you're writing a summary that you need to give equal considerations to the beginning, the middle, and the end. All right, so if I like that, I can say save, and it's actually going to attach that spoken feedback right there below my typed feedback. So now this student has both typed and verbal feedback on their assignment. I can also use this option, which is a speech to text option. So if I click that, and then I hit this record button. It is now recording my words and translating them to text. And then I hit the pause button and then it adds it right here. If I say submit, it will leave it as a text comment. So those are three quick ways that you can easily leave feedback for students in SpeedGrader in addition to actually grading the assignment itself. Now, a couple of things about the way SpeedGrader is set up. So you can see here that I've got my test student, and this class only has test students, so it's about test student one and test student two, but I can go back and forth between the two. Um, this one was turned in on time. This one was late, again, seeing that difference there. I can also, I have some different settings over here. So right here under the settings under options, I can change the way I see my students. You can do it alphabetically by last name. You can do it by the date they submitted the assignment or you can do it by submission status. I like to do mine by submission status so it puts all the ones that need to be graded together. And usually what you would see there is you would see an orange dot. An orange dot next to their name means they have submitted the assignment but it has not yet been graded. A green check mark, which is what these students have now, green check mark indicates that it has been graded. If the student's name was grayed out completely, it means they have not submitted the assignment at all. Okay, so now to get back to my course, the name of my course will be right here. So this is the name of the assignment. 
this is the name of the course. If I click there, it's going to take me back to my course homepage. And if I'd like, I can go on to the next to do. But this is actually a different assignment. And here's that dot I was telling you about. So in the last assignment, both students had submitted and both students have now been graded. Therefore, they had that green check mark. In this case, I have one student that hasn't submitted at all. So you can see that um, he's grayed out. Meanwhile, this student has submitted, but I have not graded it yet, so it has that orange dot. So that's the different indicators there. The last assignment that I just showed you was an online submission. The student chose to do a text box. This one is actually a Google Cloud assignment. So this is a essentially a, a copy, a PDF copy of the Google Cloud doc as it was when the student submitted it. You can also see that I can see how many different times they submitted it. So initially they submitted it on May 22nd. Um, and didn't actually finish it, but then they resubmitted it today and they have done more work. So this is a little different than them submitting a live link. This one actually, it's going to make, make basically like a PDF version. I can now annotate on this version. So I can come here and say, you know, this particular section and I can leave them some feedback there on that. And that's a pretty cool feature, I think. Um, and then again, I have the same abilities over here that I can, and I can actually say, I actually think this time you did better, so I'm gonna say that this one was worth 85, because I don't wanna use that same grade for this newest submission because they did more work this time on this final draft. And then I can add a new comment here, and say submit, and you can see that my comments are timestamped. So this one was May 27th at 2.04, this one was May 27th at 2.05, and this one was May 28th at 9.22. So there's some, there's the proof of like that, that back and forth feedback based on the submissions that the student has provided. And again, you'll see now that I've graded, that orange dot has gone to a green check mark, and then this student does not have a submission, and I can see that there. I can also click through my students. I only have two in this class, so it's not super prevalent or super obvious, but, but you can click through. Um, and again, those options stay up here, and they pretty much once you set them, it will stay. So if you like submission status, change it once and it should hold. You may have to come in eventually every now and then and check those settings, um, but it's super easy to change it to what you want. And then just say save settings and it will. Um, I can go back to view the actual assignment by clicking on the name. So here's the actual assignment that I gave the students. So if I need to do that, and then I can get back to SpeedGrader by hitting that button within the assignment. It does open up in a new tab if you do it that way. And then, as always, I can go back to the course itself by hitting testing, or I can go to the gradebook by hitting that little spiral icon. So. Here are here is the gradebook, and there will be a separate video talking about the gradebook that follows this one. But that is your overview of Speed Grader. It's very easy to use. In fact, it's one of my favorite Canvas features, um, especially if you have a class with a lot of submissions, that you can easily pull them up, go through them, leave quick feedback as needed, put quick grades in, and it just funnels you through from student to student. No more having to open it up folders or get emails sent to you about submissions. As long as the students turn everything in through Canvas, you have it right there accessible to you in SpeedGrader. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to any member of Digital Learning. We'd be happy to help you.